Next question is from Kelly. And Kelly is asking, how do I handle anxiety as a new real estate agent? Now, her question's a little bit longer than this, but we'll focus more on this anxiety side. Her question is this. I passed my exam and now I'm starting to think about what I need to do in order to get leads. I'm not sure what the process is. I'm not sure how to acquire my first client. I'm also having a lot of anxiety about just setting up my business. And so we'll focus more on the latter part of this question. And then as far as some other strategies are concerned, I would focus very heavily, of course, on building our SOI and building our SOI by way of hobbies and by way of geo farming and by way of just generalized connection. But when we're talking about the anxiety side, this is an important concept. And especially in light of it being a new real estate agent. So since Kelly's a newer real estate agent, what can we do when it comes to this anxiety? So the first thing to keep in mind is if you're not at least somewhat anxious as a new agent, you're probably overconfident and that's an issue. So most agents that start are going to feel some anxiety. Even agents that have been in, myself, been in the business for years and years, there's situations that are just going to produce more anxiety. So we need to have an understanding that we're not trying to get rid of anxiety. Instead, we're just trying to live with it and eventually your confidence level will grow. So what do I mean by this? I mean that as we're going out there and if we're feeling anxious about meeting a buyer for the first time because we haven't done it, that's okay. That's okay. We are going to feel anxious. And then after five years of showing buyers homes, it's going to be second nature to you. And it was the same thing when you start driving a car, you're very anxious the first time you get your license and you're going out there on your own and you're thinking about your signal light and your gas and how do I, how do I make this work and that work? And it's the same thing in real estate. Anytime we acquire a new skill, there's going to be a level of anxiety. There should be a level of anxiety because we don't know what we don't know yet. The real key here is just making sure that you have the support system. So making sure that you're following a plan and you have a support system. So if you don't know the answer to something, you have somebody that you can go to. And maybe that's a mentor. Maybe that's an agent at your office. But making sure you have the support system in place. That being said, you are going to feel anxious. When I first started to do a lot of networking events, I knew that I would be anxious in going into these networking events because of course you're going in there and you're like, hey, I'm going to have to try and get some business. Didn't really know what I was doing. In order to actually decrease my anxiety levels, one approach that I took was I had to go into this event. I need to talk to one person. After I talked to one person, I could turn around and leave. So instead of focusing so much on hitting it out of the park, we need to really shrink what we're after here. So let's put this in terms of real estate. If you're anxious about going to a listing presentation, instead of focusing on nailing the listing presentation, why don't you nail the tour of the home where they're touring you around the house? Why don't you nail the part where they're walking you through the kitchen and they're walking you through the backyard and they're showing you the upgrades? And you're saying, oh, that's beautiful. That's great. I love what you did here. And you're kind of commenting on some of their artwork, like nail that part of it or just nail the CMA. So instead of focusing on this whole concept of real estate, let's break it down into its component parts. And now when it comes to anxiety, what I've found is the more time that we have, the more anxiety that we're going to feel. So when it comes to doing a certain activity, we need to shrink the amount of time we have in that activity. For example, I need to call these five people. If I put that off until next week, I'm going to be feel very anxious about it. However, if I don't actually put that off, I just pick up the phone and start calling, the anxiety is going to disappear. So what this actually means is in face of action, our anxiety will decrease. So the more that we can actually put ourselves out there, the more action that we can have, the lower our anxiety level will be. So if you're feeling very anxious, that actually means we have to get out there and do more. Now here is the catch 22 is because we're anxious, we don't actually want to go out there and go meet more people. We don't actually want to go out there and get more buyers. We're actually scared of doing the open house, even though we know the open house will help us. So this is where kind of the emotional element of our brain, kind of that, that, that childlike or reptilian part of our brain tells us, no, we have to be safe. We're actually the thought process part of our brain, the part where we can actually think critically. We need to understand that by doing the activity, it will actually decrease our anxiety, even though we think differently about that. So we have to think that action is going to kill anxiety. Finally, when it comes to anxiety, oftentimes, again, this kind of touches on what we discussed off the start is that we're trying to think about closing a house or we're thinking about closing a buyer or we're thinking about getting a listing. And instead, we don't want to focus so much on that. We just need to focus on the next step. So what do I mean by this? 
I mean that if I'm meeting somebody at an open house, I don't need to think about how I'm going to close this buyer. Instead, I just need to think of how can I get this buyer to respond to my first email? And then from there, how can I get the buyer to respond to my next email? And then how can I get this buyer to come into a listing presentation? How can I get this buyer to be set up to receive properties? And then how can I get this buyer out looking at homes? So instead of thinking about how can I get this buyer from this open house to actually buy a house or to use me as a real estate agent, just think about securing the next step. And then as you add that up, of course, you have a transaction. And so this will actually decrease anxiety tremendously. So even when it comes to a listing, we're thinking about, okay, I have to go do our listing presentation. I'm really anxious about how, actually how I'm going to get the listing after the fact. Well, what's the next step after a listing presentation? Well, we're going to follow up with them. We're probably going to send them a handwritten card. We're going to send them a video email. We're going to explain the CMA to them. So let's just focus on each of the component steps and then put those together and you have a transaction. So oftentimes when we're, when we're feeling very anxious, we're oftentimes anxious about selling ourselves. And in fact, we don't necessarily need to sell ourselves. We just need to get the person to the next step. We just need to get the person to the next step. Let's not think about the finish line. Let's just think about inching this forward slightly, step by step, and then eventually we'll have a transaction. And then you'll notice your anxiety will decrease substantially. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode. Remember, you can reach out anytime at revrealestateschool.com or I'm on Instagram at the.michael.montgomery. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next lesson.